Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today for Wednesdays with Ray. As we're getting toward the end of our knit along, we are going to start going over techniques to finish your shawl. Today, we are going to go over the I-cord bind off, as well as how to cut even fringe. If you have never used an I-cord bind off before, let me explain some of its benefits to you. For starters, it is a two-sided bind off. It's going to look the same on the back and on the front, and it provides a wonderfully stable edge to your knitting, which can be very useful for shawls, but of course also has a great placement along the edges of cardigans, even the edges of pockets. To show you today's bind off, I have done a row or two in a contrasting color to make it a bit easier to see as I work. And to do this technique, we're going to start at the beginning of what would be a right side row, and we're going to begin, today I'm going to cast on three stitches for a three stitch I cord. Your pattern will tell you how many stitches to cast on to make a thinner or wider I cord round. To do a knitted cast on, just begin as you normally would. Knit a stitch, but do not discard this live stitch. Simply place that onto your left needle. That is one stitch cast on. Into that same stitch, knit, place it on your left needle. That's two. Last one. Going to knit and place it onto my left needle. Now I have three stitches and I'm ready to begin my bind off. To begin your bind off, knit those first three stitches, stopping at the second one. Knit, that's one, knit, that's two, and to bind off, I want to combine this third stitch with that first stitch to be bound off. And because I want it to be nice and tight, I'm going to knit them through the back loop. I just find I get a nicer finish this way than if I was to knit them the other way. That's one stitch bound off. Now I want to transfer all of these three stitches back to my left needle without twisting them. So just slipping them over, like so. I'm going to repeat this to process all the rest. Now my yarn is over here, so I want to pull that first stitch extra snug, and this is what is going to form our I-cord. So I've worked my first stitch, pulling that yarn nice and tug, knit my second stitch, and again I want to work that third stitch together with that first one of the row. Knitting through the back loop. Now I have two stitches bound off. And as before, I want to transfer back to my left needle. I will continue this way across the row. We have worked across almost the entire row, and we only have one stitch left to bind off. We are going to work that one as we have been, passing our I-cord stitches over to the left, working the first two, and then knitting through the back loop of that third stitch with the bind off stitch. And we are left with our three I-cord stitches. To process these, don't turn your work. Continue working 
pulling around to do I chord as you were, and just bind them off normally. Pulling extra snug, knit one, bind off a stitch, knit the next one, and bind off a stitch. Then you'll simply pull this through, snip it, and use your darning needle to weave that end in. So now that you've bound off all the hundreds of stitches of your shawl, it's time to add fringe. I'm willing to bet most of you have made or added fringe before. This is just the way that I like to do it to ensure that it's as even as possible. Always cut your fringe just a touch longer than you want it to be, both to make up for any length that might be lost working it into your piece, as well as give you room to trim and even out once it is worked in. In this case, I'm using a little four inch block quilters ruler. You can use a piece of cardboard cut to size, a book, anything that you like that is the appropriate size. When wrapping your yarn, try and use an even tension as much as possible. Now generally, you would just cut here and call it a day. The problem I have with this is that this is one continuous spiral. And I've noticed that as you cut it, the tension starts to fall out of the rest of these and you get a cascading length issue as you go. The way that I like to solve this is using masking tape or painter's tape. And I'll show you what I mean. Whether you're using cardboard, like I said, or a book, that's why I prefer painter's tape, um, is it won't damage whatever surface you end up taping on. So I would not recommend things like electrical tape, duct tape, things that are going to tear up your yarn and potentially the object that you are using. But before I cut, I like to take a couple of lengths of tape, maybe spread my yarn strands out just a bit to give them some space. And I'm going to cut right down the center. So I'm going to place some tape down and make sure it's adhered very nicely to the yarn and the object behind. I find that doing this slows down that tension release that happens as you start to cut the yarn and release that tension from being wound around your object. Very important, you want a very sharp blade, and ideally as small as possible, since you don't want to lift and distort any more than you have to. From there, this makes it easy for me to cut straight because I can simply follow the ruler lines. And as you can see, because of that tape, my tension's being maintained. Now my ends still aren't perfect, but don't worry about that because I'm going to show you how to fix it. Once you have all of your fringe attached, no matter how carefully you cut and how carefully you put it in, you are going to have some unevenness in the ends. Now, if that doesn't bother you, if you're okay with that edge, awesome, you're done. You don't have to do anything. But if you would like a very, very straight, even edge to your fringe, I'll show you how to achieve that. You're going to start by doing a wet block on your piece. At this stage, this is before I would block my entire piece, and it's still fairly damp to give some weight to that fringe. I've gotten out my cutting mat. My wet block has relaxed those strands. I'm gonna try and keep them as straight as possible. Keep any twists out of them because that will also affect the length. So where possible, I'm untangling them. From here, of course you can always trim things by hand, but I have found the way to get the most even result is to use a rotary cutter. So I'm going to get that 
quilting ruler back out. And using my rotary cutter, simply trim off the excess. And there you have it. Perfectly even fringe. Thank you once again for joining me on this week's episode of Wednesdays with Ray. I hope that these tips will help you to have some nice finishing edges to your work and get that perfect fringe that you're always going for. We'll see you next time.